What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Monday, September 27th, 2021, and the market is closed. You can consider this a continuation to the video that I recorded on Friday and released over the weekend. Kind of just showing you guys, it's beautiful when things pretty much play out almost exactly as you expected. It just comes from having a good game plan and hopefully you guys checked out the video that I released over the weekend. Because coming into today from a day trader's perspective, there was a lot of great opportunities for the dip buy in the NASDAQ, which is pretty much representation of the tech stocks. And if you guys remember from the previous video, which I'll leave in the description down below, or probably pop up somewhere on the screen right now. I mentioned waiting for the 50% retracement, which is pretty much almost exactly what we got today, as well as waiting for the retracement to the virgin points of control. If you don't use volume profile or anything like that, I have a couple videos in which I'm discussing what the virgin points of control are. Let's switch over right now so we can actually see the volume profile. So to get your charts to look like this, I have a link also in the description for this custom thinkorswim study that shows the value areas as well as the points of control i manually just extend it out and just draw a level here and just label it a vpoc vpoc stands for virgin point of control if you don't know it just means a point of control that has not been retested yet and usually the market likes to retest these levels almost always and when i'm referring to the market i'm pretty much talking about the s p 500 or in this case the nasdaq so pretty much the major etfs you know dow jones russell spy nasdaq i'm not referring to individual tickers although i do use the virgin points of controls for individual tickers they're more reliable when you're trading things like the spy or the nasdaq but you can use this information as an edge for when you're trading stocks which we'll get into a little bit at the end of this video there was some beautiful dip buy opportunities today now if you download the study and install it in your chart just make sure you set your time frame to the 30 minute time frame and i turn off the colors for my candlesticks you can just go into your settings right up here and then change the appearance and just make them all gray and things like that because whenever i'm looking at the points of control and the value areas i don't want to be distract distracted by candlesticks what we can see right here is this is our virgin point of control so i'm just going to change this actually because it's no longer virgin since it's been touched pretty funny when you say it out loud um, so we have this uh, previous point of control right here. And what was mentioned was that the the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ as well as the SPY was more than likely, one of them are more than likely going to want to pull back to this area. And we mentioned if we go from the all time high, which was up here to the all to uh, this new recent swing low, we mentioned that last week, Thursday and Friday, the NASDAQ as well as the SPY had gotten over its 50% retracement. However, it was below the 61% retracement. And this is usually an area that bears are going to try and defend. And it works the same way for bulls. So the bears ended up, I, I wouldn't necessarily say the bears. I can just say that the bulls are not looking to be aggressive right now because it doesn't really seem as if you know anyone's really coming in here and shorting the market as aggressive as they were a couple weeks ago. But if we pull this up right here, here, I said I would be waiting for some sort of a 50% retracement and as you can see we came pretty close down to this 50% retracement however that's not the only indication I was looking for I wanted to see if we would come back to this VPOC right here which we did and you guys can see on the 30 minute time frame price remained above it even though it sold off to it even though it did wick below it a little bit, it made sure to maintain this level and a couple times it wicked down below it here. So having these uh, VPOX are pretty important. If you trade futures, then you definitely know you pretty much can't trade the futures without it or successfully unless you have another significant edge. We do still have this VPOC up here, so the NASDAQ may attempt to do a little push up and touch it. You know, we, we pretty much know it's eventually going to touch this level again, obviously, because I don't think this is the high for tech for all time. Obviously, the market will eventually go and putting a new all time high as it always does. What I'm going to do now, as I usually do here, is I'm going to just uh, change this, move this, activate it, and move it over here because since that's no longer a virgin point of control, I just always want my most recent uh, virgin point of control. So let me actually put the V back. Um, I don't like to have too many levels on the chart. That's why I'm not even going to bother to leave this one here. I'm more so just interested in the these points and controls. This one is not virgin because it was touched the next day right here, but I did leave this up just in case the uh, market did retrace a little bit heavier. I wanted to have some sort of an idea. And I mentioned in the video over the weekend that I would consider the level between the two points of controls as a zone in which I would look to potentially get long. I also mentioned that I was going to be opening up some sort of iron condors, which I did in the SPX. And we'll get to those pretty shortly. And we'll get to that uh, pretty soon. Just want to make sure there's nothing else I really want to point out here. Again, if this is new to you guys, if you have any questions, please, you know, subscribe to the video. Leave your questions down below and I'll get to them. I'll even do dedicated videos. Again, if there's enough interest, I love recording these videos and helping you guys out. So just let me know. In shorter videos like this, I can definitely put out a couple a week or so, or at least once a week, whenever it's the shorter just recap 
So I think that's enough. Let's jump over to the SPY and we'll see what we have here in the SPY. A little bit more of a balanced day. It didn't really pull back into this VPOC from last week. But what's interesting now is we have the point of control from Friday was actually a point of control to today. So I just re uh, put the word in here. So it's double. So I just know this is a very powerful. It's not just a point of control. It's pretty much two virgin points of controls combined. So I'm pretty, pretty curious to see. But this is the type of price action I was expecting. Because again, just like the NASDAQ, if we look for what the beers are thinking, from here to here this is stuck right in between the 61% and the 50% retracement so this is a good place if you're a bear to try and short if you're a bull you're gonna try and defend this zone here and we're, we're kind of stuck there and then however if we reverse this and we look for the 50% retracement here the ES, the market, the SPY, whichever instrument you choose to trade can also come back down to here. So it would have been nice if the ES was also down here today, but the reason it did not come back down, and when I say ES, I'm referring to the S&P 500 futures or the SPY, you can use them inter inter interchangeably whenever you're doing your analysis, was the uh, Dow Jones and the Russell was very strong today. Those really were pushing strong and that will help hold the SPY up. Financial stocks are pretty strong. Boeing was one of the strong tickers today. So that will keep the spy up even though tech stocks struggled now if i actually just switch over to the spx i'll show you guys um kind of an iron condor that i have running now that i opened today and this would be it right here let's just remove this so i'm pretty much targeting let's actually go to the daily time frame and i'm pretty much targeting the region up here let's actually uh just switch over to my discord real quick and try to find the uh options that i got filled on so right here i posted it was uh today pretty much right after the market opened um was it that one yeah posted one pre-market i was considering opening this one but i ended up going with this so my strike prices are uh, uh 45.75 and 42.50 if we look at it on the chart i'm pretty much targeting a little bit up here and then this region right here down here so i'm pretty much giving it a pretty wide condor a little bit more room to the downside just because i wanted a little bit of a negative delta also just in case the spx pull back which is what i was expecting and so i opened it pretty early i normally wait till after 10 a.m to open up my iron condors but since i did so much analysis over the weekend i was very comfortable opening this one Again, I'm pretty much in the phase right now where I think most people are not looking to be super aggressive in either direction. We do have earnings coming up towards the end of the month and tech will be starting off uh, with Netflix. So I don't think there's much of a reason for the market to go in aggressive in any direction. And we, we already know that there's a decent amount of supply around here. And if we broke past the supply, we we're gonna have to deal with the supply up here. There's also the channel that we talked about over the weekend that the SPX is going to have to then struggle to get back into to come up to this area. And then at the same time, I don't know if beers are strong enough to actually push us down and break this support right here. And there's a two sigma level down here. There's a two sigma level, I think, uh, somewhere around here or so. So it's a very safe iron condor, in my opinion, right now. Could be completely wrong. You never know when it comes to the stock market, but I think the odds are definitely in my favor. And just to be safe, that's why I went all the way down here with the iron condor because you never know when the, the market is uh, crashing. But I do I think that the SPX is going to drop from where it's currently at to over 200 points down and then stay down there. I highly doubt that will happen in current market conditions. So to re reiterate again, this looks we're kind of stuck in between this zone right here and then we have this 50 right here and this should pretty much be the sweet spot that would probably hold up the spy if it came down here and then if it pushed higher, we're probably going to end up dealing with some trouble right around here. So to wrap this up, let's actually let me just let me actually just clear my charts and then to wrap this up, let's just jump to some intraday charts. What we have right here are four tickers. We have the NASDAQ over here, and then we have uh, Netflix, Apple, and NVIDIA, three popular tech stocks that tend to move with the uh, Qs, the NASDAQ. And I have the uh, quant trading app levels up. If you guys don't know, I'll show you guys every now and then because the YouTube channel is not just about the quant trading app levels. It's an algorithm that I use. I'm also the main developer on the algorithm. I programmed it a little bit earlier this year and it's what I've been using for most of my intraday trades as well as to help me with my entries and exits and a lot of my strategies. Now, this is a weekly uh, buy zone right here that the algo generates, but we had a lot of really nice uh, entries today because the queues came down to its buy zone. And if I actually pull this up on a larger chart, you can see whenever we get the Whenever we get both zones aligning like this, here's the intraday zone and the weekly level, it's pretty much a really nice 
place to enter a trade with a very tight stop loss and is usually high risk reward and what we have right up here is the two day anchored VWAP so two day anchored VWAP is always going to be a good place to risk off of or use as a profit target and this is pretty much a very painless trade right here it pretty much touched the level within one penny and then just took off from there and at the same time we had <clears throat> NVIDIA and at the same time, we had NVIDIA punctured its intraday level, but then was held up by the weekly level. Buyers ultimately came in. Similar trade, very low risk because you just wait for the first low to really be put in. And then you can use any type of retracement to the level or buy in the zone or anything. But pretty much it's a defined risk. Your stop loss is down here and you're targeting the two day anchored view app or high of day or just whenever you see momentum shifting. If we switch to now Netflix, Netflix went a little bit deeper than to be expected because it's not as good as the Nasdaq where the intraday zone was not lined up with the weekly level. But you can still see the way the way Netflix sold off was very aggressive on Monday. And I don't think there was any bearish catalyst. So that usually just means we're going to get a really good dip by trade but more importantly it's just the confluence of things and how everything ended up aligning at the same time apple netflix and um if we go back to uh you can see how this is very similar to the cues itself so when all the signs are pretty much aligning it just makes for a very easy low risk simple trading especially when we had our points of control in the area we already knew where they were and um, we knew to be expecting from last week this sort of retracement, or at least from the weekend, the retracement back down to this area. So hopefully you guys watched my previous video. And I'm, this is kind of a follow up. I guess I'll get into a habit of posting a little bit of follow up videos. But I do think if you if you run iron condors right now, I think it's a great time to be running them. If you don't run iron condors, I think you should be using this opportunity to at least follow along, see if you can learn see what you can learn if you can run some on paper use different platforms i highly recommend uh, optionstrat.com you can open up some trades there and you can you can save them or even you know run some trades on paper if you use think or swim a uh, link to my discord which is the quant trading app discord is in the description again there's a public section there's a premium service you don't have to pay for the premium service if you have any questions for me or if, or if you want more immediate responses if you dm me there or anything like that but again if you are interested in quant trading app if you are if you are interested in the levels Link to the website is in the description and there's a couple videos on the homepage of the site that can help you learn a little bit more, get a little bit more familiar with what we use Quant Trading App for and how we use the levels as well as the data behind it and things like that. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.